when we move into a new house or one that has been remodeled often we have a little celebration to which we invite our friends once a house is to our satisfaction we open it to others and provide refreshments we call it a house warmer right yes it is as if the house needs a good presence of others to be properly launched in today's first reading something similar is happening we have this woman by name wisdom wisdom is her name she builds herself a house clearly a very elegant house with no less than seven pillars seven pillars she throws a feast of fine wine and good meat and sends out her servants into the streets to gather people to her table in the first reading that we listened to as proclaimed to us the building of a house the making of a feast the invitation to come and eat and drink all these are imaginative ways of speaking about god as a wise host who invites all of humanity to learn from god's wisdom it is interesting that god is portrayed as a woman remember god is portrayed as a woman for all of us who think that god is a he sometimes we are so worried about god being spoken of only as a masculine figure here in the first reading we have god being portrayed as a woman woman wisdom that image of wisdom woman or woman wisdom who says come and eat of my bread drink the wine i have prepared finds an echo in the gospel reading that we just listened to in the figure of jesus who declares i am the bread i am the living bread which has come down from heaven anyone who eats this bread but unlike woman wisdom he declares himself to be that bread we are to eat of him and to drink of him so more specifically he calls on to us calls on us to eat his flesh and drink his blood this goes far beyond anything woman wisdom calls for in the first reading jesus language of eating his flesh and drinking his blood is shocking in many respects so much so people started objecting how can this man give us his flesh to eat we can only sympathize with those people yes it is hard to understand what he is talking about we cannot hear this language without thinking of the words that jesus uttered to his disciples at the last supper when he says taking bread blessing it and breaking it yes take eat this is my body and taking the cup and blessing it the cup of wine he gave it to them saying take drink this is the new covenant in my blood so he gave himself to his disciples his body and blood under the form of the bread and wine under the sign of the bread and wine under the symbol of the bread and wine yes the last supper became the first eucharist we cannot but hear the language of the eucharist in tonight's gospel the eucharist which we are now celebrating together in fact we too invite people to our home and put food and drink before them and we invite them to eat and drink 
Jesus invites us to his table and he puts himself before us as food and drink and invites us to eat and drink. In a language that is very daring, Jesus declares himself to be our food and drink. The one who can satisfy our deepest level of hunger and thirst. Our hunger and thirst for life. Our hunger and thirst for love. Jesus declares in that gospel, anyone who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. We come to the Eucharist, therefore, to draw life from the risen Lord, to draw God's life from him, to draw God's love. We are then sent from the Eucharist to be channels of that life, for authentic life, the life of God, the love of God. And we are sent out from the Eucharist as life givers, as agents of God's life and love, within our families, our society, and in our world. So, let us further try to understand the making of bread and wine, for instance. Bread comes from a process that starts with the seeds of wheat mixed together. All of us are familiar with this process. These are brought together as dough, the seeds of wheat. And after several stages of development, they end up as a unity which we call bread. Similarly, wine begins as a cluster of grapes, which when they are processed, end up as what we call wine. Today in this church here, a group of people gather together for prayer and worship tonight. Each of us, very unique and very different from each other. But after a process which is the work of God's Spirit that happens during the Eucharist that we celebrate together now, we become a unity which we call church. Church is not this building. Church is here among us, all of us together, the body of Christ. And in communion, the body of Christ, which is a community gathered here, is being nourished by the sacramental body of Christ. Further, if I invited you all to gather around me, just for an analogy, for instance, as close as you can, because I'm going to whisper to you, then something else would take place that might surprise you. What is it? You would notice that no long, the, the closer you come to me, the closer you would be to each other. Is it not true? Yes. If you gathered closely around me in order to hear my whispering to you, you would be touching shoulders with each other. That is exactly how community or the body of Christ is formed. It is a question of bringing people closer to the Lord and as a direct result of that, they end up being closer to each other. All of us come closer to each other and we end up closer to each other, making ourselves one unit. Dear brothers and sisters, throughout history, God has spoken to his people, God's people, in surprising ways. He spoke to Elijah through the gentle breeze, and God spoke to Moses in the burning bush, the natives of Bethlehem were in too excited that a new baby was born. And later on, Herod would in fact mock Jesus as a fool. And the soldiers would jeer him as a king before his crucifixion. After the resurrection, Mary Magdalene thought he was a gardener. Jesus was a gardener for Mary Magdalene. And for Peter, Jesus was thought to be a ghost. God appears in surprising ways to, be, to God's people. And today, that God should present God's self to us in such a simple form as food and drink, bread and wine, is just what we might expect from the God of surprises. Amen.